Hey, Kenny Rowe to WHBC Radio. The start today, you jump out to a 33-14 lead. What was the key in that opening stanza to really put them on their heels for the rest of the game? Well, we knew that uh, we needed to be solid. Uh, felt like they were going to try to establish themselves right away, and we needed to be solid uh, in those first few minutes of the game. I thought our guys did a good job of, of uh, not giving up anything easy. Uh, we did a good job of executing our offense uh, and uh, didn't allow them to get uh, in transition, which allows the crowd to get into the game. Uh, you know, just defensively, we were uh, connected uh, and trying to keep them in front and not giving them anything as um, far as attacking the basket, collapsing uh, defense, which will give them open three. So just solid effort. Uh, you know, we wanted to establish pace, control tempo. I thought we did that throughout the game. Jason Lloyd from The Athletic. I'm just wondering, the Cavs have a history of falling behind big and then making big runs and pulling off big comebacks. What did you think of the way you guys kind of hung in there and stuck together in the, in the third and fourth quarter when the Cavs cut it down to seven? We talked about that. You know, we, we, you know some of us, uh, only a few of us, was here last year when they uh, you know, swept us. And uh, you know that LeBron is going to uh, make an effort to get aggressive and uh, start to attack even more. Uh, you know, that's pretty much what we talked about at the uh, halftime. Stay solid. You know, keep uh, the ball in front of you. Uh, rebound the basketball and execute on the offensive end of the floor. So you know that's coming. Uh, they were able to uh, make a run. Uh, I thought our guys stayed pretty poised and, and, and uh, pretty calm in that situation. We talked about that uh, all season long, and uh, it was definitely needed. Um, tonight with this young team. You know, you're playing against, uh, you know, a very good player in LeBron. He's been here a number of times. Uh, you know, it's coming, and uh, you have to play through that. The Sports Animal 1390 in Youngstown. Coach, you've seen this team, the Cavaliers, four times, and you know how well they play from the perimeter. What did you guys do differently, if anything, to slow the Cavaliers down and force some awkward shots from three-point range? Uh, for the most part, we did a good job of taking care of the basketball. Uh, again, you don't want to – your offense establishes your transition defense. And uh, we did a good job of uh, you know, playing early or playing late, as we talk about. Uh, if you don't have anything early, you play late. Uh, make this team defend so that you have a balanced floor and you can get back in transition. Uh, you know, once you're in the half court, uh, keep the ball in front of you. And uh, those are the things that our guys did. Uh, we made them shoot the ball over the top. You're not going to stop those guys, but if you can f make them shoot the ball over the top, uh, rebound the basketball, then that will give you an opportunity. Uh, Nate, um, sort of working off of that, what is the difference between good three-point defense and the other guys just missing uh, good looks? Controlling the ball. You know, a lot of times uh, threes are coming off of penetration where the defense has to collapse. And LeBron is probably better than anybody in the league at finding uh, shooters on the perimeter. If you can keep that ball in front of you and make uh, the ball go over the top, uh, then you can stay home with uh, the three-point shooters and you can stay home and box out and rebound the basketball. So it all starts with being able to control the basketball and uh, keep, the, keep the ball in front of you. Coming into this series, did did you sense any fear uh, on the part of your guys of the Cavs or LeBron or anything like that? No, this this team has been um, it's a young team, and you know you know we got ten new players, and uh, they've been pretty calm and poised throughout the season. You know, this is something we condition ourselves uh, for. Uh, you know, we talk about being calm, clear, connected every single night. And, uh, you know, in, the, in a situation like this where, uh, you know, you're going into postseason basketball, you're going up against Cleveland, uh, LeBron, and all the things that he's done, uh, it's going to be emotional. Uh, you're on their home, home court, and uh, you're going to have to show that calmness. And you're going to have to be clear about what you need to do and connect it out there. And they've, they've done that. You know, we, 
you know, we haven't paid attention to what people have been saying all season long. And uh, you're not, we're not paying attention to, you know, it's a new season for us. And we're not listening to uh, what folks are saying uh, in this postseason. Just go out and play the game, uh, which is what they did tonight. We needed to show up. Uh, and our guys, I thought they did. David, Quinn, and ESPN, Nate, um, Lance Stevenson gave, gave you guys a shot in the arm at the end of the first quarter. But they had that tech when the Cavs won their run in the third quarter. What signs do you look for when you're coaching him to see if he's online in terms of helping you or out of line and, and potentially hurting you? Well, he did some good things. You know, we, we knew that uh, the, the eyes were going to be on both he and LeBron. And uh, you, you got to control your emotions out there. You can't be drunk on emotions. And uh, I thought we uh, kind of lost it there for a little bit in that second half. And, uh, you know, we made a substitution and we was able to get it back. Uh, but, you know, you don't want to take aggressiveness away uh, from your players, but you got to be smart out there and uh, calm and make good decisions. Coach Spencer Davies, Basketball Insiders. Uh, you mentioned before that the Pacers, you guys didn't have the amount of guys that you had last year. Some, some of the guys aren't in the same series. Uh, but with Miles, it looked like he was a lot more comfortable out there this time around. Uh, do you feel like that extra year and, and having had that experience last year helped him in the situation that now he's in his second year? Yeah, uh, again, uh, our guys, you know, they continue to show growth. You know, for, for us, it was a test uh, to see how they respond to uh, tonight's game. Uh, this team has never been together in postseason basketball. Uh, we, 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 we saw growth uh, from our guys again tonight in a hostile environment uh, going up against, you know, one of the better teams in the league. And uh, they showed poise. Uh, Miles did a solid job of uh, being patient out there, defending the basket. Uh, you know, Victor did a nice job of recognizing uh, matchups and taking advantage of those. And, you know, this is the thing that we wanted to see, we want to see from our guys is they continue to show growth uh, you know, throughout the season and now into postseason. Just a, a couple on on Victor. Um, I know you said earlier that you guys haven't listened to anything anybody said, but this is a question about that. Um, over the summer, uh, Cavs owner Dan Gilbert was in a discussion about um, the trade that almost happened where Paul George came here. Instead, you sent him to Oklahoma City um, for Victor and, and Sabonis, and, and Dan said, uh, I, I'll tell you that Indiana could have done better. Mm -hmm. um, is that one that made its way into the locker room or the bulletin board or anything like that? You know, someone came to me and told me about, reminded me about that. And let me, I guess, clear myself up. I haven't said anything to my guys about what people have said. You know, we ha I haven't used things like that as a motivation. Uh, the game uh, itself, playing the game the right way is what we use as motivation. Now, I'm sure our guys have heard that. I'm sure Victor, somebody might have told him that uh, here in the last couple of days. But I have not used that type of uh, information as bulletin board uh, material. Uh, for us, it's, it's about you know going out and uh, giving all we have, playing the game the right way, playing the game together. That has been the motivation uh, for this group. And uh, you know, so no, I have. Somebody did come to me and remind me of uh, what he said. And then just before you go, I mean, you know, Old Depot wound up with 32 tonight, uh, career playoff high for him, obviously. Um, just what did you think, I mean, now taking a look back at, at his game? I thought, he, I thought he played with a lot of confidence. I thought he made good decisions uh, out there on the floor. Uh, you know, we, we talked about uh, some of the things that uh, Cleveland would do. I thought he recognized those. and. Uh, did a good job of attacking um, and you know he's been the guy who's who's uh, created a lot of things for us uh, on both ends of the floor